Power Stadium in Belo Horizonte for an eagerly awaited clash between the two superpowers on this continent. And let's check on the two sides. Brazil make three changes to the team that lost to Paraguay on Sunday. Coach Dunga came in for criticism for fielding a defensive lineup on that occasion. This a more attacking one. Out go Josue, Diego and Fabiano, replaced by Manchester United's Anderson, Baptista and Adriano, who all, as you see, drop to substitute. Well, like Brazil, Argentina had a disappointing result as well at the weekend. A 1-1 draw at home to Ecuador. Coach Coco Basile makes four changes to his lineup. De Michaelis is absent from the defence due to suspension. Colacini is his replacement. Veron's absence due to injury hands an opportunity to Gago. Gutierrez is preferred to Maxi Rodriguez. And experience wins the vote over youth as Julio Cruz is recalled in place of Kun Aguero. Las provincias unidas del sur y los libres del mundo responden al gran pueblo argentino. Salud al gran pueblo argentino. Salud y los libres del mundo responden al gran pueblo argentino. Salud y los libres del mundo responden. Al gran pueblo argentino, salud, sean eternos los laureles que supimos conseguir, y que supimos conseguir. Coronados de gloria vivamos oh juremos con gloria morir oh juremos con gloria morir oh juremos con gloria morir Emotions certainly running high here at the Minerau Stadium. So much quality on view. Ó oh, pátria amada, idolatrada, salve, salve Brasil, um som intenso, um raio vívido De amor e de esperança a terra desce Se em teu formoso céu risonho e límpido A imagem do cruzeiro resplandece Gigante pela própria natureza És belo, és forte, impávido, colosso E o teu futuro espelha essa grandeza Terra adorada Entre outras mil és tu, Brasil, a pátria amada Dos filhos desse solo és mãe Gentil, pátria amada, Brasil
Brasil! 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 The results so far in match day six in World Cup qualifying on the continent of South America mean that Brazil start tonight out of the top four automatic places. At the end of this evening for these two will only be one third of the way through this marathon race to South Africa in 2010. But nevertheless, to see Brazil down in fifth of the ten nations is indeed a surprise. Dunga, the coach, under huge pressure here. The fans' insults, he says, don't bother me. It's a normal occurrence when you're Brazil coach, always under the microscope. But fortunately, we've now got Argentina, and if we win, the atmosphere will totally change. The referee is from Colombia, Oscar Ruiz, very experienced, took charge of games in both the last two World Cup finals. The two captains are Javier Zanetti of Argentina and Lucio wears the armband for Brazil. Well, Don Goodman's alongside me, and I suppose when you're looking to recover from a poor result from Brazil's point of view, Don, nothing better than the arch-rivals next up and a chance to make amends quickly. Well, in terms of motivation, it doesn't come any higher. You're absolutely right, and I think the fact that both managers have made such changes indicates that they're not happy with the way either of their teams have been performing recently. And there's a lot of pressure on both of them. And Brazil could find themselves a massive five points behind Argentina if they don't win this game. And that would be unthinkable at this early stage in proceedings. And certainly Brazil have had the Indian sign over their arch rivals lately. They have won each of the last three meetings and won them comfortably by a three-goal margin. The last time they met was in last summer's Copa America final when Argentina had looked the best side all the way through that tournament. But Dunga and his players got things spot on tactically in the final and ran out comfortable 3-0 winners. One thing to note right from the start here is the crowd in Belo Horizonte are notorious for their lack of patience. Brazil players were booed off after losing for the first time in their history in a friendly in the United States against Venezuela. Their fans, of course, follow them all round the globe. And certainly they were met with pretty hostile reception after their disappointing result against Paraguay, who were deserved winners on Sunday. Brazil just never got started in that match. It's the famous yellow shirts then to get this match underway. And the world is watching with eager anticipation. The Argentina players have, to a man, been playing up their chances in the absence still of Kaká and Ronaldinho. Any side in world football would miss the quality of that pair. And here's Raquelme, who didn't enjoy a good game at the weekend as Argentina struggled to a 1-1 draw against Ecuador. Cruz looking to try and find Zanetti, put out quite easily by Tottenham's Gilberto, who's been a regular starter for Dunga in these qualifiers. Anderson. Gilberto Silva, not too much first-team action at Arsenal last season, but he too continues to be a regular choice for his coach. I think it's safe to say there's going to be a little bit of prompting and probing in these opening few minutes. Both teams trying to get a feel for the game, feel for the atmosphere, a lot of pressure on both. I think more so probably, as we've discussed already, and Brazil. And that'll be the first corner of the game, conceded by Ince. Well, 
just think set pieces are a great opportunity, aren't they, to put the other team under a lot of pressure. They're such a huge source of goals in the modern game. Pretty sure both teams practice long and hard to get these set pieces right. Referee just uh, sorting out a little bit of bumping and boring going in there, involving uh, Lucio. Just a quiet word from the referee to the Brazil skipper, in by Anderson. It's a waste, isn't it? What a waste. Oh, it's such a huge occasion. First opening minutes of the game, had a great opportunity to put the ball in a danger area. And you hit the first man, it's a cardinal sin. One well by Mike on. Colacini can't get there. And the referee has rightly given a free kick the way of Brazil. Just didn't quite read that. Fabrizio Colacini. Well, he's just beaten for pace, isn't he? One thing we know, this fella is quick. It's in there, nips ahead of Colacini. Probably one of those tackles that looks slightly worse than it is because it happens at such a fast pace. Once again, he's all starting the game on the front foot. Very experienced. Abondantieri in the Argentina goal. No danger on the Argentina goal. I understand the pictures are breaking up for you back home and uh, we're attempting to remedy that for you Argentina need a big game out of Raquelme hasn't been in the best of form for his club Boca Juniors in uh, recent months we hear it's fairly anonymous against Ecuador as well I think there's one or two Players on both teams, some of the bigger players that actually owe their nations big performances here tonight. And he's just one of them. Gilberto. Now Gilberto Silva. Nice weight on the pass. All the way through for Baptista, but Brazil will settle for the corner. Last touch off Mascherano. I'm pretty sure. Concentrating to make this a better delivery than that first attempt. Must not hit the first man. Give your teammates an opportunity to go and attack a decent delivered ball. Had a very good Copa America, the man taking the corner last summer. Three goals in five games for... Real Madrid, Julio Baptista. Abondanzieri under pressure. That was floated right under the nose of the goalkeeper, Joan. The defender up from the back was pressurising the Argentine goalkeeper. Oh, that's more like it, isn't it? What a whipped-in ball, lots of pace into that near-post area. He's just a whisker away, isn't he, Juan? And getting his head on the end of this, attacks it very well, and in the end, Juan Danzieri does very well at his near post. Could possibly have been another corner. Argentina goalkeeper didn't make his international debut till he was 31. Pretty much been a regular in the last four years since. Ince. This is Gutierrez. Starting a competitive international for the very first time, Jonas Gutierrez of Mallorca. Messi trying to work it into the feet of his captain. Pass was a little short though for Zanetti. It's interesting, isn't it? One or two players already slipping on this turf. Just wondering about their studs and their choice of footwear. Just wonder if that could prove crucial later on in this game. Heartening though, Don, to see a surface where the ball is running 
fairly true, it's not always the case in South American football. I saw a real shocker when uh, Uruguay hosted Venezuela on Saturday. That was a pitch way beneath the standards of a World Cup qualifier. Here's Zanetti, taken out by Gilberto. There's a little bit of respite, isn't it, for Argentina? They've been the ones under the most pressure in the early stages of this game. Now it's them that have got an opportunity just to put a little bit of pressure on that Brazilian defence. And it was a, a pretty creaky Brazilian defence, wasn't it, against Paraguay? Certainly was. Cruz and Cabanas asked a lot of questions of them. It's uh, not going to trouble Julio Cesar from uh, Cruz, who's getting the nod over the highly rated youngster Sergio Kun Aguero. They're two completely different types of players, aren't they? He's a big fella, Julio Cruz. And look to get some good quality crosses into that penalty area and let him attack them. They had one really good chance at the weekend against Ecuador. Got on the end of a good cross and probably should have scored. One thing that was noticeable about the Brazil performance against Paraguay was how deep their midfield was. Such a huge gap between that area and the front two on that occasion who were Fabiano and Robinho. But uh, with Anderson in there and Julio Baptista, balance already looks better. Gago. And Mascherano. Zanetti winning his 122nd cap in a quite outstanding career, the Argentine skipper. This is Ainsay, Gutierrez, Cruz, looking for Gutierrez again. Already is a completely different feel to this game from an Argentinian perspective. Ecuador were all over Argentina like a rash, really pressed them hard, didn't allow them to play the football. They obviously knew that if they tried to take Argentina on in a in a football competition, they'd have come off second best. Not so Brazil. They'll quite fancy their chances in a in a football competition. And what that does is it just gives Argentina that little bit more time on the ball. Adriano giving willing chase. But all the word coming out of the Brazil camp is that Adriano is fit and focused again. He moved back here to Brazil on loan at Sao Paulo after his well-documented problems at Inter Milan, where he fell out with the coach, the then Inter coach, Roberto Mancini. Of course, a certain Mr Mourinho is in the hot seat now at Inter, and it'll be an interesting cocktail when Adriano goes back to link up with Mourinho. He'll get him working, won't he? That's for sure. And to be fair, in these opening ten minutes, when you see him closing down the defender like that, it's a... Not something we're used to seeing him do, is it? So, pretty sure he'll be uh, looking forward to trying to break into that team. But we know his quality. He burst onto the Brazil scene in spectacular fashion. Disappointing. Uh, just lost the pitches there from Belo Horizonte uh, for a few minutes. We'll be back there uh, straight away. Here we go. Uh, back with the action, let's see if we can rejoin our commentary team, shall we? Don Goodman and Kevin Keatons. Normal service resumed for you, here's Raquel Me. Mascherano. A little bit of room for Lionel Messi. Taken out by Anderson. Well, he's probably along with Cristiano Ronaldo, the player in the world who ghosts past defenders the easiest in modern football. As a consequence of that, he does pick up a lot of free kicks. And the man who will get over virtually all the set pieces tonight for Argentina is Juan Roman Raquelme. Colaccini has joined Julio Cruz, the heart of that Brazil penalty area. To throw a blanket over a, more than a dozen in there, just barely 
six or seven metres covering a whole host. Knighted right in by Raquelme. Defended well by Brazil. That was Juan, wasn't it? Big, strong central defender. Brave clearance. Free kick, little nudge from Baptista. They've settled down a little bit now, and they Argentina just seeing a little bit more of the ball. And Donga already showing his frustration. For all of you who remember Donga, the player, certainly used to put himself about in midfield, the ninth most capped Brazilian in history, played 91 times for his country, the present coach. And of course, the man who got his hands on the World Cup in the United States in 1994. It's going to be Raquelme again over the Argentina free kick. Deflected on its way, comfortably into the arms of Julio Cesar. It's disappointing, isn't it? in the solitary man, a one-man wall. And he was complaining to the referee that he went ten yards back. This is Minero. Mike on. Anderson. Gilberto Silva for Gilberto. Movement off the ball from Brazil is already a lot better than we saw the entire 90 minutes against Paraguay. They were off the pace in every department. Thoroughly outplayed by the Paraguayans, who were surprise losers in their match in round six against Bolivia. Strange sequence of results so far in South American World Cup qualification. Unpredictable is the word you're looking for, isn't it? Everybody expected Paraguay to go there, Bolivia won a single game. Uncomfortably. There for Mike on Mascherano taken on by Zanetti asking a lot there of Cruz. It was a poor ball, wasn't it? Quite well from his right side of defence. Zanetti, very experienced player, quality is normally a lot better than that. All the surprise score lines making this South America qualification campaign a fascinating watch. Kept in well here by Gutierrez. Fifteen minutes gone. Lost the pitches again uh, from Belo Horizonte. Wait all night, and then that happens. Very frustrating, I know. But do bear with us. Uh, the pitches seem to come back quite quickly, and there, as if by magic. A Don Goodman and Kevin Keatings. On either side have created an outstanding goal chance as yet. That's uh, Coco Basile, the very experienced coach of Argentina. Held his hands up and admitted his side didn't play well in the home draw against Ecuador at the weekend. Expecting like his opposite number, Dunga, a considerable improvement here. Messi. Just clipped there by Minero. Again, Argentina going to want to get Lionel Messi as much of that football as they possibly can. I think he's the key man here tonight for them. 
Clipped in by Gutierrez. Good effort from Cruz. It was a routine save in the end for Julio Cesar, but he... That's all he could do with the header. Well, it was great movement. He just pulled off the back of Juan, I think it was there. It was good movement, pulled away to the far post. He was picked out very, very well. You can see what he's trying to do, guide that header back across the goalkeeper and into the far corner. Just difficult because he had to generate his own pace on the ball. Adriano, now Anderson, bit of room for Gilberto. Baptista, well, he made the room for the cross well enough, but nobody able to get close to that. The surprising thing there for me is that there was only Adriano in the penalty area, looking to get on the end of that. Anderson came very, very late, but I do feel, with the onus being a bit more on Brazil, that they would commit a few more bodies forward than that. It was one of the criticisms when they lost to Paraguay, wasn't it? A little bit too negative, a little bit too defensive. They expect their midfield players to get up and support those strikers when they get forward like that. This is Gago. Forward by... Anderson, it's an accurate one to find Robinho. Oh, that's risky from Ense. There was a little look towards the referee. But he went in boldly and uh, he could probably argue a little recklessly here, Gabi Ense. Well, he just gets a nick on the ball, his boot's high. He hasn't actually got his eye on the ball, has he? But look at that, good grief, very, very easy for the referee to interpret that as a penalty. Another referee on another occasion could have seen that an entirely different picture. And say got away with it. Gilberto Silva. A sloppy pass. This is Messi. Looking for an early birthday present tonight, Lionel Messi turns 21 in five days' time. The referee is going to produce the first yellow card of the game. And shows it to Juan. Well, just for a second, I wondered if he'd uh, spotted who the culprit was. And, and he did, right through the back. Yeah, and you're only going to get one thing if you make tackles like that. Comes right through the back of Raquel, mate. A clear free kick and a clear yellow card. And he now will miss Brazil's next qualifier. It isn't until September that Juan will be out of the match against Chile. More pressing for Brazil. We all know what Raquel may can do from this kind of range. Three of his four goals already in this qualifying campaign have come from free kicks in this kind of area. Three or four purposeful steps back from Juan Roman Raquelme. Just about his range, steady goes for the chip, somewhat surprisingly, looking to try and find the head of Cruz. Messi. Now Gutierrez. Well, the only thing I can think from Raquelme's point of view is he had two or three attempts against Ecuador that were pretty poor. Just wondered if they're fresh in his mind, but you would think somebody of his experience and his quality would have the self-belief to let rip from that kind of distance. Strangely subdued crowd for a match of such magnitudes, almost as if the crowd are waiting for the players to lift them rather than vice versa. Well, they haven't really had anything to get their teeth into, have they? The crowd, they've had a, a 
A comfortable save from Julio Cesar from uh, Julio Cruz's header. But other than that, no real goal mouth action. Huge respect, of course, for one another, these two. Number one and two in the world rankings. And it's Gutierrez for Argentina. Looking to run Lucio. Good pace from Jonas Gutierrez. But there wasn't a blue and white shirt in any threatening position. Decent play, isn't it? It's a good little tracking back by Lucio in the end. That deflection kept it away from his uh, Argentinian teammates. Brazil have got to quicken the tempo up here for me. When there's no pressure on them, that they're able to pass the ball, but got to do it quicker. Now it might open up, and it will for Baptista, denied by a Bondantieri, who's there again. To close out Rubinho. Well, it's great skill, isn't it? And his chances go, they're not going to come any better than that. What a fantastic save by a Bondantieri there. Stands up. Strong hand to the ball, not once, got up quick and gathered the loose pieces. Oh, Messi appealing for a free kick, referee is not interested in those claims. And he's not offside here, it's Robinho getting away from Abundanzieri, great chance here for Brazil. Maybe the chance is gone now, Robinho turning back into trouble. And another close call on that Argentina goal. Well, he sprung the offside track so well here, didn't he? Look, he held his run, he got through. Now it's all about his decisions. Not sure he made the right one in the end, but what a glorious opportunity. And the Bondanzieri almost wrestled him to the ground. It would have been almost easy for him to go down. Here he is, he gets the wrong side of the goalkeeper. Just, there's a little grappler, little grip. Got the shirt just for a second, but to be fair to Robinho, stays on his feet. And the referee gives nothing. And then Argentina get back very, very well and crowd him out. Three, four blue and white striped shirts around him. Nowhere to go. And they force him out, but another... Terrific opportunity for Brazil. Well, he was honest, Robinho. He could have gone to ground when he felt that slight tug from the Argentina goalkeeper. A great chance. Fernando Gago. Joanne was in quickly there on Cruz, who's penalised. That's well, been more encouraging, hasn't it, the last three, four minutes for Brazil. Just put their foot on the accelerator a little bit, carved out a couple of decent openings. Zanetti. Gago, put down easily by Lucio, this is Joanne, and the free kick, Messi's not happy, thought he took that cleanly. Well, I'm not sure I can see too much in that, to be honest with you, I think Joanne gets a little bit lucky, just dwelt on the ball a little bit, calling the trade a soft one. Lionel Messi, the inspiration and driving force behind Argentina's World Youth Championship success in 2005. He's had some three years since then. A yellow card against Cruz. He's a smidgen late, isn't he? But it's the way Baptista falls and goes to ground, very, very theatrical. I don't really condone it. Pretty sure he's okay. Lucio. Poor touch from 
Adriano almost won it back again. Keep the ball for a second, aren't they, Argentina? Just take the sting a little bit out of Brazil. They've just started to get on top. Mascherano. Good ball from Gago. Kelmi so adept at finding space. Here's Gago again. He tried a very difficult pass. Which was never really on for Rakelmi. Some to niggly free kicks just going on, aren't they? Out there, Mascherano this time, and Julio Baptista. Just a reminder that Brazil are currently on eight points and in fifth place on the World Cup qualifying table in South America. Adriano as well, the winner corner out of Godiso. Argentina are second, and if they win by three clear goals tonight, which is a, a tall ask of them, they'll go top above Paraguay, who lost, as I said earlier, surprisingly. 4-2 to Bolivia. Baptista with a corner. The last one he took from this near side was a dangerous one at the near post, and again that's flighted in well. And once more it was Juan who was attacking it. That's a clear ploy, isn't it? Whip the ball in that near post area. The big fella attacking, he gets his head on it. Just can't control it. Certainly are decent balls into that near post area by Julio Baptista. <laughs> Poor clearance by Abondanzieri. But he is the reason, the goalkeeper, that Argentina are still on terms here. Making a fine double save from Baptista and Robinho. <laughs> Roberto in strongly there on Pediso, taken on by Anderson. Manchester United Liverpool clash there. Mascherano got the better of it. Well, that's what he does so well, isn't it? There was a really dangerous situation developing for Brazil there, but Mascherano in like a flash to break, break it up and take the ball off Anderson. Raquel me. Ainsie. Now Messi beginning to drift more and more. Gutierrez on his fourth cap this evening. Finding a good pass for Gago. Free kick against Zanetti, maybe a question mark over the Argentina captain there. If he gambled a little bit, Don, he might have got some reward. Well, I think he's not used to probably being in that kind of position up there in the six-yard box at the far post. You're right, if he'd have just taken a gamble and gone inside the defender, he might have found himself with a decent goal-scoring opportunity. But it is testament to Argentina. We had uh, Gabriel Ainsley on the left-hand side getting forward. Then we had the captain, Zanetti. Coming up from the right-hand side, they are they're not just sitting back and soaking up 
pressure from Brazil. They're perfectly prepared to go out and, and try and nick a goal themselves. Anderson. A good job of quieting the crowd down Argentina, haven't they? First task accomplished successfully. Messi, Raquel me looking for Gutierrez. Maicon was always favoured to get there first. Anderson, who's feeling around his uh, left knee. Big game for the Manchester United youngster. Still only 20 years old, it's his seventh cap for Brazil. It's just that awkward coming together there, isn't it? Lots of knees and you get thrown off balance and... Anything can happen. Well, that was obviously quite a slight problem, Anderson. Don't forget, of course, it's been most of these boys play their football in Europe. It's been a long, hard season for most of them. Well, already Diego is stripped. Anderson preferred to Diego by Dunga. But, uh, the picture for the Manchester United man doesn't look too rosy, does it? And uh, Diego's arrival imminent. And here he comes, the man who plays his football in the German Bundesliga with Werder Bremen. Had a terrific season, scored 13 goals in the season just completed. But he had a disappointing game, as they all did in the famous yellow shirt against Paraguay, and it's a, a big time really for Diego to impose himself in the Brazilian national setup in the absence of uh, Kaká and Ronaldinho. They very much need a playmaker, and another opportunity here now for Diego. I think the thing with Kaká and Ronaldinho, it's not only their flair and creativity, it's the volume of goals that they scored for Brazil as well. It's noticeable the goal scoring output over the last few games without those guys has, has gone noticeably down. A lot of onus on the likes of Adriano and Rubinho and Diego now to try and chip in with a few goals. Lucio. Out easily by Zanetti. Juan. Now Baptista. Gilberto Silva. Nice little spin there from Adriano. He's got Mike on wide. Takes on Gutierrez. Gago got a foot in. Well, I think that's where Maicon has got to do better. A terrific defender. Bags of pace and power. But when he gets himself up into that final third, he very often fails to deliver. The more attack minded, right sided player, Daniel Alves is amongst the Brazil substitutes this evening. He didn't make the bench against Paraguay at the weekend. Alves, as I'm sure you're probably aware of by now, has moved clubs in the close season. He's gone to Barcelona from Sevilla. 
This is Mascherano. Nice wait on that for Mainze. Here's Cruz. Gutierrez. Gago, pressurised by Mineiro. Diego with nowhere to go. Crowded out there, isn't it? It's a, not a lot of space. Every time you get the ball, put under a lot of pressure. As a consequence of that, the ball's changing hands far too often, probably for both managers' liking. Been a long, long wait for a major trophy for Argentina. They haven't won one since the early 90s. Great players like Zanetti and Veron and Crespo, all the veterans now and Cruz still waiting for that first international crown. Not too many opportunities left for players like that. Raquelme. Messi working back to really good effect there against Mineiro. This is Gutierrez. Messi again. Mineiro under pressure and illegal pressure in the eyes of the referee. Foul against Messi. It's not particularly the game we were all expecting, is it? It's not full of fast, free-flowing, exciting football. It's a bit stop-start, a bit messy. You pardon the pun at the moment. And maybe, given the recent results of these two, it's not surprising that we're getting the game we are up to now. Argentina drawn and lost in the last two World Cup qualifiers. Brazil, for the first time in seven years, have just lost back-to-back -back international matches. No real tempo to the game, that's what's really surprised me. I've watched a lot of these South American qualifiers, and one thing that struck me is the high tempo passing and movement from all the teams, even down at the bottom. It hasn't really happened here tonight. Baptista. First rumblings of discontent from the crowd as well. I'm sure they were expecting better. Gago. Now Messi. Free kick against Juan. He needs to be careful already on a yellow card. Because he stands his ground and Kelmy goes into him, and you're right. Depends on how the referee's interpreting these situations, but a couple more like that, and he might be off the pitch, and that's the last thing that Brazil can afford in their position. Kelmi passed up the opportunity of testing Julio Cesar with a last free kick from around this distance. This time he may have other ideas, just a touch further out than the last. But he's capable even from that range. Four blue and white shirts in that Brazil penalty area. And here's Adriano. It's poor again, isn't it? Such a heavy, heavy pass.
So many star names no longer available to Dunga, likes of Cafu and Roberto Carlos, nominally regarded as full-backs, but often wingers in the uh, great Brazil sides of the last uh, ten years, wonderful servants for their nation. And they do miss that pair, undoubtedly. I think any team would, wouldn't they? Fantastic players, like you say, marauding fullbacks. Yeah. Really seeing the same, are we, from Maicon and Gilberto? Tonight, anyway. Well, Diego will take the Brazil free kick. It's been a while since either goal was threatened, even remotely. Lucio and Juan both forward from the back. Well, that pretty much sums the game up, doesn't it, so far? 43 minutes in, apart from a couple of good moments for Brazil. Bondanzieri, two really good saves. That's been our lot so far tonight. It's a game that it's flattered to deceive, really. It's almost like both teams are frightened to lose in this game rather than wanting to go out and really grab it by the scruff of the neck and go and win it. Foul by Adriano on Ainsay. Again, untidy challenge. Once again, he's working hard. Let's give him that. Adriano, but that's not where Brazil need him. Halfway in his own half. Looks as though he's lost a little bit of weight, which has produced the return to form for Adriano. For uh, the club he's been on loan at recently, Sao Paulo. But at 26, Adriano has time on his side to be a regular in the Brazil setup if he remains focused for the next four or five years. I wonder if Argentina will ever have a better opportunity of beating Brazil on this ground in Brazil. 33 years, we forget. It's almost lost on us, isn't it, since Brazil have lost a, a competitive game at home. They do look a little bit fragile for me, almost there for the taking, but... Decent ball forward from Colaccini, and here's Messi! It was right on cue, wasn't it? Fragile, I just about got the word out. And Argentina sliced Brazil open, and that... By his own high standards is a fantastic opportunity for Lionel Messi. He really loses composure and thrashes at the ball, and he's nowhere near. Well, we were almost blinking in disbelief there as Messi fired wildly wide of the target. First touch was good, got it out of his feet, and we expected him to at least be testing Julio Cesar in that Brazil goal. here between uh, Messi and Lucio coming together nothing in it <laughs> referee decides that will be enough for what has frankly been a disappointing first half and you can hear what the Brazil fans in particular think about that opening 45 minutes Abondanzieri's been called upon to make a couple of smart saves from Baptista and Robinho. Little from Argentina going forward. And at half-time at the Minerao Stadium in Belo Horizonte, Brazil nil, Argentina nil. House, Brazil are ready to kick off against Argentina in the second half. Oh, if he was playing.
tonight at the height of his skills. Wouldn't that be wonderful to see? Let's rejoin our commentary team, shall we? Don Goodman, Kevin Keatings. Thanks, Rob. Welcome back to the Minerau Stadium. Well, they need one of the star players in yellow to lift the atmosphere, which is becoming an ever gloomier one here in Belo Horizonte from Brazil's point of view. As the boys have touched on, Argentina will be well satisfied with picking up a point here. After all, it's over 10 years since they last won on Brazilian soil. That was a friendly. No changes in personnel out there other than the one that was enforced upon Brazil in the first half when Diego, who's on the ball now, came on for the injured Anderson. Well, we're surely going to see better in this second half from this Brazilian team. There is a lot of talent out there on display. Straight away we look and we see the fullback Gilberto getting much further forward than he did in the whole of the first half. My drop for Adriano, Colaccini saw to it, it didn't. Fifteen goals have been scored in the four previous World Cup qualifying matches between these two. One would be nice. Well, it is a game, it, like you say, it does normally yield goals and opportunities and flair and skill and not a lot of that been evident here tonight I just wonder whether like I said a little bit of a fear of losing going on certainly a lack of confidence from a Brazilian perspective or a bit of fatigue long hard season could be any number of reasons but they're 45 minutes of their football season to go and you would expect them to give just one last real big push Lucio, the most experienced of the Brazilian players out there, winning his 72nd cap this evening, the captain. Michael. Last touch was his. It's a correct decision. Argentina throw. Footballers are funny, aren't they? Feel for anything. It clearly comes off my gun, doesn't it? Right in front of the assistant referee. Diego. This is Gutierrez, who for a while has been interesting. Portsmouth. Plays his football with Mallorca, Jonas Gutierrez, very strong, very tall for a left-sided midfield player, stands well over six feet. Baptista can't gather the ball in. space out there a lot of closing down a lot of pressure being applied on the ball one of the reasons that the game hasn't really flowed I guess Gilberto Silva now Lucio Diego Yet another niggly foul. Seen a number of those this evening. Totally unnecessary challenge that from Insight. I think the player of his experience would know better. Not going anywhere, will they? Just stand up, make him go backwards. In by Diego. Mere catching practice for Pato Abondanzieri. Just concluded two seasons in Spain with Hetafe. 
Riquelme wants a Villarreal. Fell out with them very publicly. Now back in his native Argentina with Boca Juniors. Crowd doing their best to entertain themselves. Here's Robinho. One flash of brilliance could open it all up. Adriano looking for Robinho. You could see what he was trying to do, couldn't you? Reverse pass, just a little bit heavy again. And it's just that final third, that little bit of quality, a little bit of composure in the final third. What's missing at the moment? Javier Zanetti. Lionel Messi. Breezes past Juan. Terrific change of pace there. It's a foul. Oh, I'll tell you what, he's been booked already, hasn't he? Lionel Messi's holding up an imaginary card. That's out of order. Don't like to see that. But it was a rash tackle as Messi gets in behind. He lunges in. He doesn't get the ball. I'll tell you what, it's a yellow card for me. Well, that is tightrope walking from the Brazilian defender, Juan. A change of pace. Well, certainly done for better defenders from him than in the past from Lionel Messi. Take a brave referee, wouldn't it? Send off a Brazilian at home against arch rivals Argentina. Messi and Raquelme sort things out from the free kick. Badiso, Colacini joined uh, Cruz and Ainsay. Plenty of threat in there for Argentina. Might be an opportunity for Messi to whip this straight in on goal. Zanetti. Ainsay. Diego, looking early there for Robinho. Gago. Mineiro, giving it away to Gago, some sloppy passing from Brazil. Challenge from Minero made up for that earlier poor distribution. This is Diego. Excellent movement off the ball there from Adriano. A little bit of extra dash about Brazil here. Robinho. Michael. Now Diego. So good at that, isn't he, Mascherano? Well, he's the best. Absolutely priceless job he does for both Liverpool and Argentina. Dunga will be thinking about Fabiano and Daniel Alves in particular. With two substitutions still available to him. It's a question of how bold Dunga wants to be here, whether he prepared to sacrifice one of his two defensive midfield players in Minero and Gilberto Silva against the side of Argentina's high quality. Referee deciding that Adriano is worthy of a yellow card now. Oh, he just jumps straight into Ainsay. Makes no attempt whatsoever to play the ball. And again, I don't know if that's a little bit of frustration. Certainly hasn't had much service. He's starved of the ball. A little bit of frustration coming out. A yellow card for his troubles. Raquel me. Did well to hold off Minero.
Maicon has been penalised. It's a tackle from behind, nowhere near the ball. A clear free kick. There have been lots of these niggly little tackles that have just interrupted the flow of the game. Uh, 18 year old uh, Pato of AC Milan. I wonder if he might get a part to play as uh, Berdiso's header flies well over that Brazil goal. Well, he thinks that's a half chance, really. Just gets too much on it. A big central defender. An interesting inclusion, uh, the teenager Pato, because uh, Donga says that even at the tender age he is currently. He is a player that can make a difference. Somebody out there needs to make a difference because second half hasn't improved in overall quality from what we saw in the opening 45. Stalemate still in Belo Horizonte. What a frustration out there, isn't it? Down there on the pitch, in the stands. Niggly, niggly little... Three kicks, so needless as well. Ainsie. Nice ball from Raquel Me. This is Cruz. Well, Raquel Me's asking for it back. It is an absolutely masterful touch. Look at that. Right into his path. I don't know whether he controls his first touch. He gets it a little bit stuck between his feet. Certainly should be hitting the target at the very least. Goes very close, but golden, golden opportunity for Argentina. And is he offside? I don't know. Raquelme's asking for it back in the centre there. And it's a great opportunity for Argentina. I think Mike on Don had switched off, hadn't he? The right back, he'd stayed in very deep. Yeah, and looking at the game and the way it's gone and... Alfio Basile bound to be much, much more content than Dunga, the Brazilian manager. Argentina asking the questions again. Referee right on the spot. I think it was obstruction by Diego. Before uh, Maicon slid in. I think Diego is penalised, not Maicon. And again, the referees... He's having to stop this game so often, I'm sure he doesn't want to, but he hasn't really had any option. Well, the Argentine uh, fans who are here in the Minerao Stadium beginning to make themselves heard here. Surely going to be the Right foot of Raquel Me. Some pieces have been disappointing tonight, haven't they? He's out there with a lot of quality, a lot of capability to deliver the ball so much better than they have. Well, the referee's having a word with Basile, the Argentina coach suggesting perhaps that he'd encroached out of his technical area. It's about half a yard between his technical area and the pitch, isn't it? He's going, look, you can see there, he's going a long way to encroach, won't he? Insane. Gutierrez. Signs that Argentina beginning to pass the ball around a little more accurately and crisply. Uh, definitely in the ascendancy for me. As I said, this incredible home record is there for the taking for Argentina. Well, the book is out again.
Fernando Gago. He's a smidgen late, isn't he? I guess the Argentinian argument would be, if that's a yellow card, then surely Juan earlier on, five minutes or so ago, should have been getting a second yellow card. Luis Fabiano had a wonderful season with Sevilla, hoping uh, his time will come. Strongly linked at the moment with the Italian club Roma, Fabiano. They've been tracking him for some time. The understanding is that he has a release clause in his contract that if somebody's prepared to pay 12 million euros, it's... Uh, Equates to around eight million pounds, and he can be secured. We apologise again for the breakup in pictures that you are experiencing. Hopefully, it won't last uh, too much longer to inconvenience you. The main statistic in this match, with a little over an hour gone is the high number of fouls that have been perpetrated. As Don Goodman has rightly pointed out, it has stopped the flow of this match. Eagerly awaited game, which is yet to ignite. Baptista with a free kick. Oh, that was a good effort. Don Danzieri had got across and uh, turned it over fairly easily in the end. Well, he got the height over the wall, he got the power, he got the accuracy. Don Danzieri just read it well, took no chances and helped it on its way. It's better. This is something for the crowd to get their teeth into here. Firmly out via Gargo. Here's Messi. His foul on Minero. Brazil will take the free kick quickly. Advantage play by the referee, but he won't be allowing play to continue there. And the book is out once more. And this time, the name of Mascherano is going into it. see this I'm not sure we can have any complaints it's done for pace ball gets nicked away from him and there's the tackle clear trip referees about a yard and a half away when you get a match with all this volume of fouls in it you're bound to get lots of yellow cards and that's what's happening Five yellows being shown now, three of them to Argentina, who are defending this Diego free kick. So once again, the quality, very, very disappointing. It's a good clearance out from Pondanzieri, low trajectory, and Gutierrez had read the goalkeeper's intentions and forced Mike on into exceeding the throw. I don't think we're that far away, are we, from when Dunga's got to make a decision about where his team goes from here. They're not particularly threatening Argentina, if anything. It's Argentina that are doing the better quality attacking at the moment be thinking about a change soon, I would suspect. Gutierrez finding Ince. That was a very interesting cross with Julio Cesar was looking to come and meet. But the movement only was from the Brazil goalkeeper. Nobody really attacking that for Argentina. That was incredible. It bounced about a yard away from him and he made no attempt to actually intercept it, the Brazilian goalkeeper. For him, no Argentinians taking a gamble.
forward by Lucio, more in hope really than in the expectation he was going to spring one of the front two clear. Brazil continues still to look nervous, tentative. This is Baptista. Diego, Baptista. Robinho. And he's been on the periphery of the game, by and large, Robinho at that penalty claim that he might have got in the first half. He needs to get more involved, doesn't it? Good skill by Julio Baptista there, just setting that move on its way, but you can see Robinho after that shot, just waving his arms at the crowd, urging them to get more behind this team. Into a crucial stage of the game. One piece of magic, that's all it's going to take. And there are players out there that have got it in them to produce it. Well, Brazil kicked off here tonight in fifth place of the ten nations in the South American World Cup qualifying campaign. And if they only draw this match, or even go on to lose it, and with Venezuela playing Chile on Thursday, if there's a winner in that match, then Brazil will drop out of the top five. But here, Gilberto, the left-back, seen him that far forward too many occasions closed out by well by Colagini just the last two or three minutes he's made a couple of sorties forward Gilberto the left back oh, no. in by Gilberto Adriano offside Argentina are getting ready shortly to make a substitution. It's a good line, isn't it? And Colaccini and Ainze. And uh, Julio Cruz, the 33-year-old Inter Milan striker, starting a World Cup qualifier for the first time this campaign. He's going to make way and he'll be replaced by Atletico Madrid's Rising young star Sergio Kun Aguero. He's got ability, Aguero. High for a goal and one or two opportunities against Ecuador in the last game. Just didn't hit the target with them, but got into good positions. Certainly a player who knows where the net is, though. 20 goals in Spain last season. For clearance by Mike on Raquel me for Gago Messi Gutierrez Messi again good movement here from Gago the defending in the end by Lucio Gutierrez finding Messi, he's got away from Lucio, Lionel Messi! Blocked by Juan. Superb defending, superb defending by Juan, coming across. It's Messi, done the hard bit, and he got in between and in behind that Brazilian defence. Strong run here from Baptista. Earns his side a free kick. Quickly there, Gutierrez, referee deciding that he would allow play to continue despite putting whistle to mouth. But the danger signals were up a moment or two back for Brazil when Messi got into top gear. Spoke about one moment of magic, clearly he's one of the players 
very, very capable of producing it. So nearly did. Fantastic tackle by Juan, stopping him. And once again, if anybody's looking likely to score, it's the boys from Argentina. Well, I don't think the crowd are too happy about the departure of Adriano. But on in his place comes Luis Fabiano, who for a long time was very much out of the picture for Brazil under Dunga, who saw him once as a disruption in the dressing room. Three and a half years he was out in the wilderness before he made his comeback last November. Good work from Messi, Raquel me. He was frustrated with himself, you can see what he was trying to do, bend that into that far corner. Once again at the heart of that attack, Lionel Messi, just coming more and more into this game. Here's Michael. Polacini tripped, chance here now, in by Fabiano, and the volley doesn't overextend Abondantieri from Baptista. Acrobatic, doesn't quite catch it cleanly. Fabiano picked him out after a Colaccini slip. Remonstrating with the referee, he feels he was fouled here. Just he stands on his foot there, you can see. The assistant referee was only about five yards away. Didn't spot it, let play go on. That could have proved very costly for Argentina. Fabrizio Colaccini is figuring in his first qualifying match of this campaign, coming in tonight for the suspended Martin Di Michaelis. More football coming up for you at the weekend. Australia against China, 9 o'clock Sunday morning. Sky Sports 1 for that. World Cup qualifying on the continent of South America. In the southeast of Brazil, the city of Belo Horizonte. A disjointed match between Brazil and Argentina, just little signs, particularly from the Argentinians, that they're going to belatedly illuminate the proceedings with a goal. They have the edge. In a match of relatively few chances, given the quality of player on display. Badiso forward for the free kick. Taken by Raquel Me. Lucio deciding to head clear when it would have gone comfortably through to Julio Cesar. Looks so comfortable at the back, haven't they, Argentina? Strong defending, very disciplined. Made things very difficult for the Brazilians. Diego. Joan working it wide here for Gilberto. Had a lot of injuries when he moved to uh, Spurs last January. Finished the season in the team though. This is Diego. Baptista trying to muscle his way into a shooting position. This is Mike on. Well dealt worked. with by Mascherano. I was going to say it's well worked, isn't it, down that right hand side? But again, highlighted that in the first half. Gets in those positions, Mike on. I expect him to do better. That was almost a very good pass for Aguero from Javier Mascherano. Argentina sensing a goal here. Down went 
Greg Kelmy, referee not moved to give a free kick his way, and in truth, there weren't too many claims for one. Offside against Fabiano. Again, I keep saying it, Lionel Messi is getting more on the ball, and when he does in that final third, he's making things happen for Argentina. Very, very quick feet. This is the tackle right through the back of Raquel Mick. You can't really see how that's not a free kick. Has to go through the back of Raquel Mick to get anywhere near the ball, Minero. Here's Messi. Trying to link with Aguero in the past. Those two have had a fine understanding when they've played together. Kelmy getting more on the ball now as well, which is heartening for the Argentinians. Messi. He's hurt his knee, hasn't he? Messi. Son touched his knee and limped as he tried to turn there. It's not any recurrence of the injury that blighted his last season. He was out for a couple of lengthy spells from the Barcelona team with a muscle tear. Oh, he turns so, so sharply. There must be a lot of pressure goes through that knee there. Look, you see, he grimaces, goes to hold the knee. Positive sign for Argentina, he's up on his feet. Vividly remember him leaving the field against Celtic in the Champions League in tears when he uh, again suffered that muscle tear problem. Mercifully, it looks as though Messi is okay. This is Luis Fabiano. Took a deflection, I think, on his way. Yep, Brazil corner. For the first time, looks sharp, didn't it? Fabiano off the bench, nice and fresh. Prepared to have a little go, take the defence on, try and get shots away. Diego with the Brazil corner. Gutierrez got the initial header away, Aguero working it forward. And there you can see Messi running freely again. Diego. In by Mike on, but untroubled. Avon Danzieri. Daniel Alves is stripped and ready down there to come on. Here's Messi. away from Gilberto Silva who niggled back to good effect Messi felt the uh, way to the challenge there from Gilberto Silva which was a clean one offside again against uh, Fabiano Brazil can make their switch now will it be Daniel Alves for Mike on Seems the most likely change for Dunga. No, it's uh, Diego who's coming off. Substitute, substituted. Well, there's nothing a professional footballer dislikes more than that. You don't like being a substitute in the first place, to be fair. But to be taken off and you've come on as a substitute, yeah, not a nice feeling. He hasn't had much of an influence on the game, to be fair. His set pieces have been poor, Diego. Strong running here from Gargo. And the new man, Daniel Alves, has fouled him. And then we do feel it is only a matter of time before Raquel gets one of these free kicks on target.
Well, they're normally so dangerous. Argentina from set piece situations, principally when Raquelme is involved, and he's over this one again. Ten minutes plus stoppage time left. The Mineral Stadium in Belo Horizonte, Brazil, the home side, struggling to make their mark. Is this Argentina's moment in by Raquelme? Alves. Looks like he's slotted into midfield, isn't it, Daniel Alves? It's virtually where he played all that last season with Sevilla. Couldn't really call him a right back. He just loves to. Power forward, he'll enjoy that role in the minutes that remain. He's got terrific energy. And Brazil simply have to lift this performance, otherwise, the media will be sharpening their pens and there'll be more flat coming the way of Dunga and the players. The crowd are doing their best to lift their team. Of course, if it stays like this, it'll be three games. Both of these teams have gone without actually winning, which is quite an incredible statistic. You think of the talent they've got. A great fillet for the lesser nations on this continent, and uh, it is good to see some of the lesser lights come into the fore in World Cup qualification. And certainly, nations like Paraguay and Ecuador and Venezuela spring to mind have improved markedly largely because they export more players to higher quality domestic leagues. That's the way it's been going in recent years. And that's why South American qualification is a lot more competitive these days. It's good to see. But it would be a major surprise if these two are not in South Africa in 2010. Here's Raquelme. Aguero. Now Zanetti. Aguero chipping it into the path here of Messi. Getting away from Juan. And Aguero volleys high over the crossbar. And he holds his head in his hands. He says that broke. His eyes would have been lighting up once again. Good link-up play between Aguero and Messi. Messi trying to work it onto that left foot. Gets blocked, but it drops for Aguero. Argentina making final switch. On comes midfield player Bataglia to replace the clearly tiring Raquelme. Tagger plays at the same club as one Roman Raquelme, Boca Juniors. Comes on for his seventh cap. There are four more South American World Cup qualifiers before this year is out. Games come up in September and October. For Brazil, Chile and Venezuela away, Bolivia Colombia at home. Argentina's matches see them go to Peru and Chile in their home games against Paraguay and Uruguay. Ainse. Zanetti. Brazil got their only goal at the weekend in the 94th minute. So this magnificent Brazil record 
of having not lost a competitive game at home for 33 years might still be a threat. They are more likely to score. I think Argentina at this stage of proceedings will be disappointed that they're not in front. I think they've clearly, clearly been the better team. That must be a real worry for anybody connected with Brazil. They've failed to shine on their own patch. And they've been outplayed for me in the main. Well, last autumn I did the Brazil game at home to Uruguay and they were outplayed for virtually the whole of that match. But they miraculously came away with a 2-1 win. Luis Fabiano scoring both of them. This is Gutierrez. Referee deciding there was a foul there on Messi. And he spots the shirt being pulled there by Mineiro. Well, such a, a, a tiny little pull, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Rubinho in the first half got exactly the same treatment from the goalkeeper. Yep. And he stayed on his feet. Interesting point. Now Rakelmi is no longer with us. So Messi preparing to take charge. Still not 21 years old, but already a key player for club and country, Lionel Messi. Can he provide the spark? It's well defended by Brazil. One of the better free kicks from Argentina. <laughs> Referee flying advantage. Well, it looked like he was going to. Well, he should have. And Baptista giving him an earful, isn't he? Had a great situation developing there down that right hand side. Here's Mike on, tussling with Gutierrez, who did a good job for his side there. Hard worker, Jonas Gutierrez. Confirmation of a yellow card for Gutierrez. Not for the challenge on Mike on, but for something Alves. out of order earlier. Daniel Alves, he pulled him down when the referee should have played advantage. The referee's justification for stopping the game was uh, to book him. Lionel Messi. Fernando Gargo. Alves, Gilberto Silva, right here, into a little bit of space, but not uh, particularly well utilised by Robinho. Beautifully taken there by Messi. Ince is getting forward from left back. Messi tried to find the run. Not quite. That's well, nearly brilliant, wasn't it? Nearly. You know, given Argentina's recent record, Don, against Brazil, under normal circumstances, a draw on Brazilian soil would be seen as a good result, but. Uh, these are rather exceptional circumstances offside against Baptista. And you're right. Most of the time you'd consider a great result. Baptista just strayed half a yard there. Went too early. Dunga doesn't agree. The officials have got that one right. As you can see.
Almost then into stoppage time. Aguero. Free kick has gone against uh, Cuneguero. So you look at the, the, the opportunities, the saves that goalkeepers have had to make during the course of a game often tells you what kind of a game it's been. I can only think of the one. And that's Abondanzieri. Very crucial save quite early on from Julio Baptista. But apart from that, the game has been fairly devoid. But maybe a late sting in the tail. We're playing two minutes of stoppage time. Daniel Alves distraught, he wasn't used in that attack. Argentina are looking to get Palacio on for a repeat of what he did at the weekend, but maybe Messi! Beaten away by Julio Cesar, Messi again, and it's wide. Yeah. Great chance to win it. Fantastic. He's on his own, he's got no option, pulls the trigger. Goalkeeper doesn't hold it and he follows it up. He's trying to wrap his foot around that and bend it into the corner and he gets it all wrong. Lionel Messi, but what an opportunity right at the death for Argentina to take away the three points. And oh, for me, they've edged it, they've edged a scrappy game. But this is what Lionel Messi, Lionel Messi brings to the table. Very, very sharp player, but just be disappointed with that final effort. Well, it's his last involvement. And Rodrigo Palacio looking to do what he did at the weekend. He came on in the 89th minute against Ecuador and scored in the 94th. To preserve Argentina's long unbeaten home record stretching back 15 years but the referee decides that that will be it a poor scrappy game at the Minerao Stadium ends Brazil nil Argentina nil couldn't separate the big two on the big night Brazil and Argentina ending goalless this is what it means to the qualification table uh, for South America 2010 Argentina stay in second Brazil stay in fourth Venezuela and Chile play Thursday night.